We welcome South Dakota State student athletes and Coach Nagy to the dais. And we'll uh, make a couple of procedural announcements before we uh, ask Coach for his opening statement. A reminder to raise your hand when you have a question, and we'll send the mic holder your direction. Uh, please wait until the microphone arrives. Uh, before you ask your question, if you can direct your question to a specific student athlete, uh, that would be helpful. And a reminder that locker rooms are open once the 10-minute cooling off period has expired. So if you need more uh, information from either of these schools, their locker rooms are open. And let's go ahead and take an uh, opening statement from Coach. Really proud of our guys. And um, I mean, you know, we're just so bad offensively in the first half. I thought we really competed in the first half. And the whole game we competed. You know, we, we lose by one on the glass. 11 offensive rebounds, uh, shot the ball obviously better in the second half. We, we uh, scored 52 points in the second half, so we clearly played better offensively. But, you know, Maryland played well too. I thought, you know, they hit timely shots and uh, I, I'm really proud of our kids that they didn't give up. You know, the, if, if I had the final play over, I, I would have called a timeout. I mean, we, we, we go through these things. We, we knew, we know what play we're running. We knew what to do. Um, but we just, you know, we have personnel in there that we don't normally have in there in those situations. And so, uh, you know, if, if, if looking back on it, I, I would have been way better off for me to call a timeout and make sure we knew what to do. I just, you know, I get in that point and I'm, I worry about them changing defenses or doing something and giving them an opportunity. So if we know what we're supposed to do, um, uh, you know, then we do it. But we just, you know, we, we just had some personnel in there that aren't normally in there. All right, let's direct questions to South Dakota State student athletes, Mike Dom, George Marshall, and DeAndre Parks. Once questions for those three have been exhausted, we'll return to coach. Matt Zimmer, Argus Leader. Uh, DeAndre, is there any uh, you know, consolation in the fact that you guys put together such a spirited comeback here? Um. Like Coach Nagy said, you know, I'm real proud of this team. Um, we didn't give up. When I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people thought the game was over at one point. And um, we kept fighting. And I'm just proud of this team. George, how did you guys uh, get that comeback going? It seemed like early in the second half, Maryland was making so many three-pointers, it looked like it was going to be tough to come back. Uh, you know, we really just buckled down and uh, got a string of stops together. Uh, you know, we were getting stops, and you know, obviously we played a lot better offensively in the second half. Uh, and it was just a combination of those two things that, you know, led to that comeback. Zach Ward, KDLT, DeAndre, uh, it looked like this game was really getting away from you guys, down 18 three times. What were you able to kind of do to, to settle things down that you saw that you were able to settle things down with? We just reminded ourselves what we went through in the summer league tournament, um, you know, to stay focused and just play hard each possession and continue to string together stops. Um, Coach Nagy also reminded us, you know, we've been in this position before and we know what we got to do. And I mean, we almost pulled it off and, you know, it was, it was a tough loss and that's it. More questions for student athletes? Mike, did you guys think you were going to win it? Got it to within five, got it within two, and the crowd started getting into it. Did you think you were going to pull off the comeback? Uh, of course we did. Um, you know, we had that set in our mind. Uh, you know, we can win this game no matter what, you know, no matter who we play. Uh, and we had that set in our mind that uh, we weren't going to go out losing. Uh, just didn't happen. Mike, obviously you lose some great seniors on this team, but you'll be back next year. A lot of these guys will be back. What are you going to take from this as you really proved the this school's medal and prove that you can compete at this level? Um, well, yeah, we are going to lose great seniors. Uh, the leadership on this team, obviously, was all the seniors. But, uh, you know, with us young guys, we're just going to have to come together um, and work real hard in the offseason next year, and uh, we'll be back at it again. All right, we'll dismiss the three student athletes, and once they've left the stage, we'll return to questions for Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Questions for Coach Nagy. Uh, 
Uh, Scott, what changed for you guys to get be better offensively in the second half? Did you make adjustments or did you just start making shots? We didn't, we didn't really make any adjustments. Now, we, we took less threes, which was good. Um, we went inside more, I you know, and it wasn't – we, we talked about it a little bit because I, I thought the three-point shots we got in the first half were good ones. Uh, some of them might have been a little quick, but they were good ones, and we just didn't make them. Uh, but, you know, our guys, the one thing we talked about, we, we didn't shoot a free throw in the first half. Too many threes. We weren't aggressive at all. We were much more aggressive off the bounce and throwing the ball inside in the second half. And that helped, uh, that helped open up the perimeter, too, and we shot better in the second half. Don Marcus from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, there were two foul calls at the end of – one was at the end of the shot clock and one was Mello driving the lane. Uh, did, did it look to you that those, those calls were, you know, questionable the, in terms of how, how, the, the way the game's being called and then to make those calls in those situations? Um, you know, I, I, they, they explained to us uh, from the beginning of the year that they were going to call it tight. And, uh, you know, every coach is going to agree and disagree. And, you know, they, th those calls certainly weren't why we lost the game. Uh, and so, you know, I, of all the people in that gym, that's the last job I'd want is to be an official. Uh, you know, and I think they do a great job. And, and so, you know, I think that I, I think that we know they're going to call it close. You know, if, if guys are going to come off the screen, keep your hands off of them. You know, and don't count on it just being this time of game. They're not supposed to call foul. They, they call it the way it's supposed to be called through the whole game. So I, I didn't have any problem with them. Uh, Coach Daniel Martin from CSN in Washington, D.C. Um, when Mello fouled out, I don't think Maryland's been in a situation where Trimble's fouled out this year. In your huddle. We haven't been in a situation where George has fouled out either. So. <laughs> Did, did, at that point in your huddle, did you feel like you had backed them into a corner and you guys were in uh, as good a spot as you could be at that point? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I mean, there wasn't any talk about okay, now he's out, now we have him. So I don't know if there was any any switch that got flipped in, uh, in terms of that. But I think you know, for them, I mean, they're so used to him having the ball all the time. We're so used to George having the ball all the time, and it's really what cost us not being able to get a shot there at the end of the game. Uh, and that's why I say if I had that back. I, I would have called a timeout just to make sure. But, you know, I, it, it hurts them, no question about it, when he's not in there. I mean, he's a tremendous player. We, we had a hard time getting him under control off the ball screens. Scott, when you're trailing by 18 three times, did you feel like this team was going to have enough gas to come back? I think it was still in double digits with about eight, seven minutes left. Yeah, I mean, I watched him, I watched him do it twice in our tournament. And, you know, that's, that's just what we talked about. We've been here. We know we can do it. You know, it's, let's face it, it's, those weren't Maryland. Uh, and we knew it would be a tough task. But the one thing we knew we couldn't do was just keep trading baskets with them. And I, I mean, I couldn't believe, I mean, they hit some tough shots, you know, at the end of shot clocks. And uh, uh, Carter hit, hit two tough shots at the end of shot clocks. It really hurt us, one running hook. And, uh, you know, I, so you got to tip your hat if they make those shots because I thought our defense was really pretty good tonight. But, you know, if you're going to make a comeback, it, it has to start in the defensive end, not the offensive end. And yeah, you have to make shots, which we didn't in the first half. But we, you know, we, we scrapped. Our, our kids did everything they could possibly do to win that basketball game. Coach, uh, in, in terms of what Jake Lehman gives them, uh, it looked like as long as, as long as you guys were sort of concentrating on trying to stop Mello, get Mello yeah. out of the lane, Lehman was going to have that, or, or Nickens were going to have those corner shots. Most of the day, it, was it a sort of pick your poison kind of well, thing? Well, it or? really is. I mean, let's face it. Uh, I mean, here we are leaving a six nine, tremendous shooter, great body, great athlete. You know, we're having to leave him open because their posts are unbelievable, their point guards unbelievable, and so yeah, it is pick your poison. And and he, you know, he's the one that probably won the game for him. He had he had some big shots and and made big plays for him. Scott, I know every time you've made the tournament, you've always referenced back to the players who were there during the 20 loss seasons. What do you think this group will have done for your program going forward, playing this kind of a game and, and really further amplifying uh, this program on a national stage? Are you talking about the seniors that we have now? The seniors, the team, yes. Yeah, seniors. Well, I mean, we have our work to do. We, uh, you know, <clears throat> I mean, we, we've got some, some very good young players coming. Uh, but, you know, I think I, I still hearken back to uh, I mean, hopefully what, what George and DeAndre and Keaton uh, and Jake will have done for us is just 
solidify that you know and can if you come here you're gonna have you're, you're gonna have a great opportunity to be successful but you're also going to play with with great teammates uh, and I always tell kids this this is when we recruit them we, here, here's the deal college basketball is tough and if you're not tough don't come here because because it won't work you'll leave you'll end up leaving and we don't want kids to leave and you know kids in division one basketball are transferring at almost a rate of 50 percent uh, we're not interested in that we, we want kids to come and commit and stay and be tough and so the kids that like that message uh, you know they'll, they'll be successful at South Dakota State but these these four seniors have been that for us and and uh, they've, they've committed to our program. They've given us everything we talked about after the game, the, that this is what living feels like. You know, it's, it's what I talked about last year. When you put your heart into something, sometimes it's, a, it's so exhilarating that, that you, you can't believe it like it was a week ago. And when you put your heart into it, it's, it's heartbreaking sometimes like it is today. That's just the way it is. There's no in between. There's no in between when you really want to live. And, and these guys are feeling that today. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep.